In this short video, we'll be looking at how to create a cash flow statement. Um, for background, if you want to follow along the question information, uh, it comes from Accounting MBA 2nd uh, Edition, Chapter 6, Problem 21. Um, if you're not using that textbook, it comes from the Accounting 2 Managerial, Chapter 13, Problem 21. So some basic information at this point in time. It's not all of the information, um, but it's enough to at least start us off with the operating cash flows. So what we have here is some select balance sheet information, uh, two years worth, accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid insurance, uh, accounts payable, accrued salaries uh, in the liability section. We also have some profit and loss information. So sales, cost of goods sold, other operating expenses, interest expense, income tax expense. Um, so these have been extracted from these reports. There would be other information in there as well. Uh, just enough key information so that we can show it on the screen. There are a variety of ways to put together a cash flow statement. The method that I will talk about today is the reconstruction method. Now why a reconstruction method you say? Well, it's a matter of reconstructing the, reconstructing the events of um, what has occurred over the past year. Now I liken this to the hangover approach to constructing cash flow statements. Um, so as a good accountant, when I go out, I want to get a sense of how good a time I've had and I'll keep a track of what I spend. Well, that's not actually true because if you're going on a night out, that generally doesn't happen. But if you know what you start the night with and what you have the next day, you can start to reconstruct what occurred over that period of time. And that's actually what we're going to be doing here. We have starting and ending balances for assets and liabilities and we're trying to piece together what took us from that start point to that end point. And first cab off the rank when we look at the operating cash flows is what happens with cash receipts from customers. So to do this, the reconstruction method uses the T accounts and I much prefer this method because it is pretty much bulletproof. As long as you make sure you put the accounts on the side they're meant to be on, everything else everything else sort of works out. So for cash received or from you know, sales to customers, the two accounts from this question that we need are sales and accounts receivable. So the first thing that we put in, so we just draw up the T accounts and what I'm putting in here is just the starting and ending balances for accounts receivable. This is just, this is just from the information from the balance sheet. So we have a start of 55, we have an ending balance of 45. Now that's not all that's gone on. We also know from the profit and loss statement that there were $450,000 worth of sales. And that would be a debit account receivable credit sales. Now I'm assuming all the sales go through accounts receivable and it just makes life easier. You, you don't have to make that assumption, but um, it will actually make things easier and you would get the same answer if you made some sort of arbitrary split of cash and accounts receivable. So that 450 goes into accounts receivable and we stop there and we look at that and 55 plus 450,000 doesn't equal the closing balance of 45,000, which means something else has to have gone on in the account receivable account. And that is a $460,000 credit and that $460,000 credit is the amount of cash received from customers over the course of that year. So again, we're reconstructing the account. We have the start and ending balances. We know some effect which has gone on, which is sales. And then whatever hasn't happened, so whatever we need in there to balance it all out, if you've taken into account every other piece of information you can see, is a cash effect. And so that would be debit cash 460,000, credit account receivable 460,000. Moving on now to the expense side of the, operate, uh, the operating cash flows. Again, it looks like there's a lot going on here, but all I've done is put in T accounts for all the various accounts we need. So we have cost of goods sold and other operating expenses, so from the profit and loss statement. Um, we have inventory, prepaid insurance, accounts payable, and accrued salaries. So 
current assets and liabilities. And the first thing I'm going to do is just simply put in the opening and closing balances for each of these. So for inventory, prepaid insurance, accounts payable, accrued salaries, the balance sheet accounts. Now that we've got them in there, we can start to add in the other information that we know which has happened. So cost of goods sold. We were told that there was a $225,000 um, of cost of goods sold. So that would be a debit cost of goods sold. And those cost of goods come from inventory. So we credit inventory 225000 Now the thing is you look at inventory and that obviously doesn't balance out at 200000 It would actually be a negative number. So that means we must have acquired some additional inventory somewhere along the way. Work out what that amount is and it's 250000 So that would have been debit inventory 250000 credit account payable 250000 And then you look at account payable and, and that doesn't balance out but we'll hold on to that for a moment. We also know in the expenses there is other operating expenses. And these other operating expenses, there are 30,000 of them. So you debit other operating expenses 30,000. And okay, I've made a bit of a call with this one, but in a sense it, it doesn't matter what we do. I've called it that there's been 5,000 of prepaid insurance. So 5,000 of the prepaid insurance has been used up, which makes prepaid insurance work. And that all balances. The remaining twenty-five thousand, which is which needs to be a credit, is goes against accounts payable. Um, so I've just put that against accounts payable. I've said you know we've obviously used things up and we might not have paid for them up front. And so that's the account payable balance dealt with. And so we look at accounts payable. And we've got one hundred and fifteen plus two hundred and fifty plus twenty-five. That doesn't equal one hundred and ten. We need something on the debit side and that amount is 280. So that is the amount which would have been paid to suppliers. So that would have been debit accounts payable 280, credit cash 280. We also have accrued salaries which isn't balancing if we leave it as is. Um, so I've just said with accrued salaries that none of the other, none of the other operating expenses went near it um, and the only change in accrued salaries is that we've paid some of these employees that we owed. So we started at 35, we end at 10, it means off means we've paid in net $25,000 of accrued salaries, so that is also a cash flow. So the two amounts that we have in other operating or in operating cash flows are payments to suppliers or payments to employees or payments to just various expenses of 280,000 and 25,000. There are a couple of other operating cash flows which are in existence here. Um, these are interest and tax. Now in the question information, and it wasn't well made well clear earlier on, but if you go to the actual question information, there are no interest payable accounts and no income tax payable accounts, which means any of the profit and loss effects are cash effects. So the 20,000 of interest expense, that's actually paid this year. And the 30,000 for income tax is actually paid this year. Moving to the investing cash flows, as I said, this is a bulletproof method. We use the same approach. We just identify the accounts that we need and these are anything to do with property, plant and equipment, land, any non-current assets, any accumulated depreciation or depreciation expense amounts. And we simply put in the balance sheet accounts for them. So we have property, plant and equipment changing from 720 to 800, accumulated depreciation going from 170 to 240. We we're also told that depreciation expense is $70,000 in that particular year. So we debit depreciation expense 70, we credit accumulated depreciation 70, and if we now look at accumulated depreciation, that balances. So there's nothing funny going on on that account. And if you've got the question in front of you, 
you'll actually see that there is no real other information about property, plant, and equipment. But if you look at the account, something has happened. And what we have here is an $80,000 debit to property, plant, and equipment. Now, given we're not told anything else about it, we have to assume that is a cash payment to buy additional property, plant, and equipment. So that would be debit, property, plant, and equipment, 80, 80,000, credit, cash, 80,000. And that's the investing cash flow is done. You're probably about two steps ahead of me here, but the financing cash flows use exactly the same method. So we just go and have a look at uh, long-term debt or non-current non -current liabilities, as well as equity accounts, obviously not retained earnings, but we're looking for things like ordinary shares or contributed capital. We have loans here and ordinary shares. Put in the starting and ending balances. Um, ordinary shares have increased, loans have decreased. 250,000 on ordinary shares doesn't equal the ending balance. We need a $100,000 credit on there, so that would be debit, cash, credit, ordinary shares, 100. That gives you cash received. On loans, 230,000 starting doesn't equal 180,000 ending, meaning we have to have $50,000 as, as a debit, I should say, meaning we had a credit cash of 50,000, so cash went out. Extra information in the question states that there was a $45,000 dividend paid, so that's easy, you've given that, and that's your financing cash flows done. So when we wrap it all together, this is what the final statement looks like. Um, cash flows from operating activities. Now if you notice up there, in this particular question, the cash payments to suppliers and to employees, the total amount they've got there when you add the 255 and the 50 is the same as what we worked out. They've just split it in a slightly different way, but it's, it's the same total amount. We have cash flows from operations of 105,000. Cash flows from investing activities is the 80,000 outflow from the purchase of equipment. Cash flows from financing activities is a $5,000 net cash inflow. And to finish it all up at the bottom, you show the net overall change, which is the 105 minus the 80 plus the five show the cash that you had at the start of the year and end up with the cash at the end of the year. And if it's worked all itself out, that 45 is what you had at the start and the 75 is what the cash balance is at the end of the year from the balance sheet. And that's it. That is calculating or sort of creating a statement of cash flows using the reconstruction method.